In this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to the panel called the Symbols panel. Symbols in Illustrator are pieces of artwork that you intend to use over and over and over again. It's kind of like a shortcut for copies. So I'm going to go to File and Open. And in my Chapter 10, I'll go to Demos, Illustrator Symbols, and I have this little Symbols Map Art. We're going to add some symbols to kind of indicate where restroom areas are, swimming areas, and picnic areas. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in, but before I do this map, I wanna show you how the symbols work. So with this file open, I'm gonna go to File and New, and right up here, I'm gonna click Print, Tabloid. I'll set my measurements to inches, make a vertical sheet of paper and I'll click create and right over here underneath your eyedropper are your symbol tools you have eight of them so I'm gonna press and hold and all the way over to the right is a little vertical bar called a tear off so when I hover over that and let go of my mouse I can tear these off and you'll notice the first one is called your symbol sprayer this is not like a spray paint can, okay? You're not doing spray paint. I'll just close my layers here. What you're doing is spraying pieces of artwork. The artwork that you wanna spray is on your symbols panel. And most of these are circular in nature and I don't wanna use those. So in the bottom left corner of your symbols panel are symbol libraries. I can click that and come down to nature. Okay, I got this great little butterfly right here. You've got a bunch of different objects that you would typically find out in nature, but I'm gonna click on the butterfly. Notice that gets added to my symbols panel so I can close this panel right here. And I have this circle, okay? This is your brush radius and the bigger the brush radius, the more difficulty you will have in controlling the symbol sprayer. So what I wanna do is go right on this symbol sprayer tool, double click, and that brings up the symbol options. Okay, the diameter of the brush is almost three inches. I'm gonna type 1.5, make it half of that size. And I'll click okay, there we go. So the first thing is if you take and you click on a symbol and let go, now you come out and click, click, click you'll be able to spray symbols if you just press and hold you'll just keep spraying them out on top of each other like a big ball of butterflies if you click and drag you're gonna spray a bunch of butterfly symbols all over the page and notice as you do that I'm gonna hit delete as you do this there is a box that gets bigger and bigger and bigger so when I click I've got a box, but when I click here, the box gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. That is called a symbol set. So be aware of that. Okay, you're gonna, I'm going to be calling that out later. So I'm going to hit delete. If I don't want so many butterflies coming in at a rapid pace like this, I double click on the symbol sprayer and I lower the intensity down to three. I'll click OK. Now when I click and drag, I don't get as many, but if you just press and hold, they're still going to pop up right on top of each other. But at least it's going slower. So what I can do is click, 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 click. I want a couple of them flying around on my page like that. Okay. Once I have laid them out on the page, I double click my symbol sprayer and set the intensity back up to eight. The only one I need to lower it for is the symbol sprayer. But when its intensity is set to eight, the other tools will work great. Eight is great. Okay, the second one is called your symbol shifter. It's basically like a move tool. So if I wanted this one to be not so far away, I just click and drag it. Notice it kind of skids into place. So what you have to do with these is drag multiple times. Put it right on its back. 
drag, 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 and you can move them or shift them around. Okay. The third one is called your symbol scruncher. It doesn't work. It's supposed to take two of them and scrunch them together, but it's kind of useless because I can take this and just scrunch them together like that. Okay, so the third one, the symbol scruncher, pretty useless. I don't even use it. The fourth one is your symbol sizer. Now again, since I set my intensity back up to eight, you do not want to press and hold because then you got Mothra here, okay, fighting Godzilla. You don't want that. So I'm going to edit, undo. You just want to tap on it. Click, 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 click. Click, 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 click. If I want one to be smaller, like let's say I do that and I change my mind, option and click, and I can shrink it back down. Okay, if these two got too big and closer together, I take my symbol shifter, shift that one away a little bit, maybe move that one up, and we'll move this one in. So now I've got a bunch of different size butterflies flying at different heights. Okay, the next one, again, sizer, you click to blow it up, option click to shrink it. This one is your symbol spinner. So instead of them all ro uh, going up and down in formation, I can rotate them. So I put my symbol sprint spinner, which is basically a rotate tool, right over the back, press and hold, and now I drag, press and hold and drag, drag, drag drag, drag, and just kind of shift them around a little bit. Okay, now it looks more organic and realistic. This next one is your symbol stainer. And basically, it lets you recolor your artwork. So if I clicked on the fill, and then I clicked on a shade of pink, I could stain that one pink. If I click on green, stain it green. Click on blue, stain it blue, click on reddish orange, and we'll stain that reddish orange, and you get the idea. You can stain your artwork any color. This one right here is your symbol screener. It adds elements of transparency. So if I clicked right on this back, it will disappear, 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 until it's almost completely gone. If I change my mind, I hold my option key and click, 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 click to bring it back. So if I wanted it to fade just a little bit, don't click directly on its back. Click over here. And then if it doesn't work, so I'm clicking and nothing's working, get a little bit closer. See, now it's slowly fading away. But if I'm right on its back, it will fade out pretty quick. Okay? So it all depends on where you are on that object, but that is your symbol screener. Click to make it transparent, option click to undo the transparency. And the last one is called your symbol styler. It's kind of lame. It ruins artwork. I, I've seen no good use for this. But what it does is you go to your graphic styles panel right there. And if I clicked on this graphic style called foliage, and then I click on a butterfly, it basically traps it in a box. It looks stupid. If I clicked on this one called dusk, and I click, it's like the butterfly got trapped in a block of ice, which kind of takes away from the whole butterfly effect. So I don't want those. Okay, that's a quick rundown of your symbol tools. So I'm going to close this. Close this untitled file. I don't need to save it. And I'm going to come back to our map. Okay. In order to see things, I'm going to tear the symbols panel out. And I'll just pull that edge down a little bit. And we do have a black and white symbol for the restrooms. Okay. But I also need the swimming areas and the picnic areas. So on the bottom left corner of my symbols panel is symbol libraries. I'm going to click that, come down to maps. And if I pull this edge down, I've got all the typical symbols you would see on a map, like my restrooms. I also have 
my swimming areas right here. So I'll click that and it adds it to the panel. And I've got a picnic table. Click it and it adds it to the panel. And that's so I can close up this panel so I don't have my whole screen covered with panels. Okay, what I wanna do is add one restroom symbol here by itself. So instead of taking my symbol sprayer and trying to spray a symbol on here, I'm gonna click and drag right onto the page. Take my black arrow and we'll click outside. So there's one restroom symbol. Click and drag one swimming symbol. And I'll click and drag one picnic area symbol. Okay, we'll just put them right down in there for now. Then I want to click on the restrooms and put more restrooms on my map. But if you're mapping out locations on a physical map, you don't want to just randomly put them on the map. you got to guide people on where to go. So I would not take my symbol sprayer and just start spraying restrooms all over the map. It wouldn't work. Okay, I'll delete that. What I do is double click the symbol sprayer for my symbol options, lower the intensity down to three, and I will also lower the diameter down to, let's say, one. Now I've got a nice smaller brush to help me to control things. I click once on the restroom symbol and I just click, 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 click we'll put one there one by the beach and one over there got a couple of restrooms around the park notice the box is getting bigger and bigger as i go so what i want to do is have this box only for the restroom symbol so i'm going to hold my command key click outside on the side of the page and the restrooms are done i'm going to use a separate box for the swimming area. So I click on the swimmer, click. Now when I click here, the box gets bigger and bigger and bigger, swimming, swimming, swimming. Notice how the box is expanding only around the swimming symbols. Command and click, that symbol set is done. And now I go to the picnic table. And I'll do the same thing. We'll add a couple of picnic spots right here. And we'll put one right there, one in between, one in that space, one by the beach, and a couple right in there. And there. So now the picnic symbol set has gotten big, and I'll click outside with my black arrow. Now that I've mapped out all these locations, the map looks kind of boring because every symbol is exactly the same black and white black and white black and white i want picnic tables to be brown like wood i want restroom symbols to be red so people can easily recognize them because usually if you got little kids it's always an emergency i want swimming symbols to be blue to represent the water but illustrator only gave me black and white or my boss wants them to be in color, but Illustrator only gives me black and white. So what I'm gonna do is show you how to update symbols. I'm gonna take one example of the restroom, drag and drop it on the side of the page right there. One swimming, drag and drop it right underneath, and one picnic. Then, since they are small, I'm going to take my zoom tool and zoom in real close so I can see the artwork that I dragged from the symbols panel. Okay, what I want to do is colorize these. But when I take my black arrow and click, and I click on the fill, and I click red, nothing is going to happen. Okay, when they come directly from the symbols panel, they are symbol artwork. They're not editable artwork yet. So what I have to do is select one symbol, go to Object Menu, expand the symbol into usable artwork, and I click OK. Now I can see the anchor points all around it. I'm going to do the same thing with the swimming. Object 
expand, OK. Take the picnic table, object, expand, OK. Now you'll notice when I click on this one with my black arrow, there is a sharp angle rectangle or square around the symbol. That's like a boundary. Okay, you want to get rid of that because this is a group. So if I clicked and said red, the whole thing would just turn all red. Edit, undo. I want to get rid of this box and the only way I can do that is with my white arrow. So I'm just going to hover right about there. Click on that corner, delete, delete. Hover over where the corner would be. Click, delete, delete. Hover where that corner would be. Click, delete, delete. Now I've got editable artwork. So with my white arrow, I'm going to click here. Click on the fill and make it red. Maybe I'll click her. Shift click, shift click, shift click, and I'll make those maybe orange. Click on this one, I'll make that a dark blue. Click, shift click, shift click, and I'll make those light blue up here on my color panel because I didn't have a light enough blue, so I mixed up my own up here. I'll click here and we'll set that one to a brown. Click and we'll make the table dark brown. Click, shift click, shift click, and we'll make those dark red. Yeah, that looks a little too dark. Let me click, shift click, shift click, and we'll make those uh, yellow. Okay, there we go. So notice when I zoom back out, that did nothing to my map. It did nothing to my symbols either. Okay, so what I have to do is convert this color restroom symbol into a brand new one. But the problem is twofold. If I take this color, drag and drop it onto my symbols, I'm gonna get a box that says, what are you trying to turn this thing into? The export is a graphic. I'm making a dynamic symbol. But when I click OK, nothing happens to my map. And the last thing on earth I want to do is delete all my symbols and just put them all back on again. There's no point in that. I've already designated where they need to go. Okay, I just need to replace the black and white artwork with the color artwork. But it's not doing that. So I'm going to go to edit, undo, and here is the trick. I'll focus on this little corner area right here. We can see a couple of restrooms, a couple of swimmers, a couple of picnic areas. Okay, so all I need to do here <clears throat> is take this color restroom symbol, hold my option key or alt key on a PC, and drag and drop it right on top of the old black and white. When I'm holding my mouse and my option key and I let go of the mouse first, it'll update my symbol artwork automatically for me. Select the swimmer, option, drag and drop it over the old black and white, and now all my swimming have been updated. Take my picnic table, hold option, drag and drop it over the old black and white, and now I have a colorful map that has been updated to my version of these symbols, then the key and everything. And that's how you deal with your symbols panel here in Adobe Illustrator. So if you're working on this at home, do whatever you want. If you're working on this to turn it in for my classes, save this as last name, first name, symbol map, and we can move on.